Get Carter was released in 1971. It stars Michael Caine as Carter himself and is directed by Mike Hodges. The film sees Kane playing Jack Carter, who's a mob enforcer working down in London, who goes up north to Newcastle to basically try and figure out what went on with his brother. His brother died of an apparent suicide, but he doesn't believe that that's the case. So he, he basically goes around, tear ass in round town, cracking skulls and, and yeah, just basically doing anything he can to find out who killed his brother and why. This is one of the first kind of gangster films that I saw way, way back. Uh, I, I was early teenage years when I saw this, really loved the film way back when. Uh, never, never kind of bought it on DVD though or anything until now uh, when there's a special edition release that's, that's been released and yeah, I, I got it, picked it up, rewatched the film. And it, it does still feel pretty fresh, it's got to be said. Um, it's very gritty, it's very just down to earth. There's, there's no like, it's not your Godfather kind of gangster film where everything's operatic and it's not your Guy Ritchie kind of gangster film where everything's kind of style, stylistic and quirky characters. All the people in this feel like real people, they feel like you could cross them in the street and not really know who they are because they're going about their business and as long as you're not in their line of sight you've no reason to to know who they are. So yeah, Carter in this is a very unsympathetic character, he's not someone you kind of relate to, he's not even someone that really you're rooting for um, and that can be said of pretty much every character in this film, to be honest, um, except the dead that we never meet. So Carter's brother has a real presence throughout this film, and yet we never meet him, because obviously he's dead. He starts the film, he's, he's dead, he's died. That's the whole mission that Jack goes on, is to find out how he died. But you get the sense through Jack's interactions with the people that his brother knew and the people that he grew up with as a, as a kid, as a young man, um, you get the sense that Jack's brother was the flip side of the coin that, that Jack belongs to. Jack, Jack was the bad seed, his brother was the good seed. You know, had a family, raised a kid, looked after the kid, even though the woman he had the kid with kind of did a bunk and didn't want it to do with it. He, he stuck around clearly, you know, tried to be a good dad. Uh, so, yeah, we get all that information just through interactions and we, we have this sense that actually it's it's the dead who are innocent It's and, and it's it's innocence that dies, ultimately. And what is left in, in the realm of mankind is just death, decay and sin, as represented by the world that, that Jack kind of frequents and lives in and does his business in. So it's quite a bleak outlook, really, of humanity, uh, but but it is kind of obviously within a, a gangster world, so it, it's to be expected. But I do like that it, it never tries to get us to sympathise with Jack or with the people in his circles. So on the one hand you've got that gangster film kind of thing going on, but also at its core, it's also a detective mystery thriller. You know, it's like, who did kill his brother? Why did they kill him? And as Jack kind of unpeels the layers of this onion, we find out why. Uh, one, it kind of endears you more to the dead brother and, and sympathise with him and his plight and what went on. Um, uh, but, but also it, it makes you hate the world of, of these gangsters even more. So, and, and there's, there's a lot in there that kind of, makes it reminds me of the nice guys or you know given that this came first more to the point there's a lot of stuff in the nice guys that now reminds me of this the film doesn't seem to have much sympathy for its female characters either they are often used as as either uh, some kind of sex object or a piece of property for for the men that whose world they live in. That side of it is a product of its time. Um, I think if it was made today, uh, I haven't seen the remake, so I couldn't tell you, any, you know, how it was handled there, but I think if it was made today, they would probably put 
a stronger kind of female character in there with a bit more kind of direction, self-direction, a bit more agency, I should say. Um, but but I feel like here it's real. You know, it feels like, well, that's that's how it would have been. That's in this world. That's how it would be. Um, so I, I kind of appreciate that more, not because that's how I view women, but because I can very much imagine that in this world, the world of gangsters, that is how women would be treated. There's some pretty shocking moments of violence in this as well. But, you know, again, 1971, it's not like Tarantino levels or anything like that. Uh, but there's stuff that when it comes, it hits and it hits pretty hard. It's not over the top bloody or anything like that. There's one particular scene where Jack throws someone off a building. And I think the shocking thing about it is just how blasé he is about it. How calm, cool and collected he is about it. Like it's just, yeah, it's just all in a day's work. Jack in this always feels like he's heading on the road to hell. I think, you know, his brother isn't necessarily going to be a, re you know, a redemption for him. Find finding who killed his brother isn't going to redeem his soul in, in any way. You never really feel that. Uh, but you do feel like the truth must come out. And I, I think that's part of what's at the heart of the film is, is getting to the truth no matter what the cost um, and, you know, having people's sins be kind of revisited upon them. You, you've got to pay for your sins. And, in, and that goes for Jack as well. You always get that sense throughout that he's on borrowed time, given, given all the stuff he's getting up to and given the world that he lives in. There's only so many people you can throw off buildings and, and shoot and run over and whatnot before all that stuff catches up with you. So if you want to watch a gritty gangster film that feels a lot more real, a lot more kind of based in reality rather than, you know, other stuff that I mentioned, then definitely check out Get Carter. It's not bursting to the brim with action or anything like that. Uh, it's, it's fairly slow burn by modern standards, but it, it hits pretty hard. It's got some interesting characters, uh, though not ones that you necessarily identify with. Um, uh, but yeah, it, 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 was, it was an extremely good gangster film. One of the best British gangster films, I would say. Top tier. Uh, but yeah, if you have seen Get Carter, I would like to know what you think about the film. Do leave your comments about it down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching this video and until next time, cracking.